Welcome to What America's Thinking, where we discuss key elections, demographic trends, and public opinion. I'm Rafael Bernal. And I'm Julia Manchester. The first Senate rankings for the 2024 election are out. According to the Cook Political Report, Democrats will have to play more defense than Republicans will in 2024. They'll have to defend 23 seats. Republicans are defending just 11. And while it's too soon to say what the 2024 landscape will look like, Montana, Ohio, and Arizona have been deemed as toss-ups. All right, let's focus on Arizona, where Congressman Ruben Gallego officially announced he's running for Senate. He's challenging Senator Kirsten Sinema, who has not yet announced a re-election bid, and who recently announced her, de her departure from the Democratic Party. If cinema runs again, we could see a three-way race in a state that is pretty evenly split among Democrats, Republicans, and independents. 2022 election exit polls showed of the roughly 1,600 voters surveyed at the polls, 26% were Democrats, 35% were Republicans, and 39% were independents. So joining us now to weigh in on the possibility of a three-way race, his decision to run, and more is Congressman Ruben Gallego. Welcome, Congressman. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So we reported that you're stepping down from Bold PAC, uh, the uh, Congressional Hispanic Caucus campaign arm. So tell us a little bit in, what went into that decision and what you learned from your uh, tenure at Bold PAC. Well, I was always you know, very clear with my membership that I'm accountable and that you know, as much as I love the work I've done, I love working to get more Latinos elected, more working class people elected. Um, I also don't want to take away from uh, the capability and uh, success of that by being distracted by this run for, for Senate. So uh, I've decided to step down. We're going to have a smooth transition uh, and, uh, you know, hopefully have uh, someone come in and do a better job than me. Right. And Congressman, moving to the situation on the ground in Arizona, we know that the state has a history of electing um, not necessarily people to the far right or far left of their parties like uh, Senator Sinema or even uh, the late Senator John McCain. Do you think there is a lane in Arizona for a progressive like yourself? Look, I think these D.C. labels don't matter to voters in Arizona. They really just care about someone that understands them. They and I believe at the end of the day, when they learn about my history and the fact that I had to work hard for everything I've ever earned uh, in this life, the fact that I didn't have a bed till I went to college, the fact that, you know, I had to work, you know, your uh, line jobs, your carpenter jobs, your meatpacking factories, the type of things that a lot of people do, but a lot of senators forget when they go uh, to uh, D.C., and they want someone to fight for them. And at the end of the day, that's what matters. And look, we've litigated this already. You know, this is the same thing they were saying about Fetterman. They're saying they're saying about Warnock. Uh, you know, I have the same voting record as as uh, Mark Kelly. Uh, and and by the way, in Arizona, no matter who you are, no matter how left or right or center you are as a Democrat, you're always going to be too liberal when the Republicans attack you. So um, it's about connecting with the voters and really talking about their issues and listening to them. That's what really matters in the end. So speaking of, of having to work hard during your career, at times you've, you've had to work hard uh, to either convince Democratic leadership to, to back you or butting heads in, even in, in both pack sure. this last election. Um, so far, we know that neither Leader Schumer nor uh, Senator Peters, uh, head of uh, Democratic Senate campaigns, has endorsed you, uh, has pushed for you, has vouched for you. Uh, did you expect uh, did you expect a quicker endorsement? Did you expect this to be easy? No, no. I Look, nothing's ever come easy in my life. Uh, I, I've worked for everything, and uh, this is not going to be any different. But first of all, I'm going to work for the voters of Arizona and try to get their support. That's what really matters at the end of the day uh, and focus from them. And look, we already have a great head start. We have more than 37,000 individual donors. We've raised more than $1.3 million just from those individual donors in a few days. We have uh, you know, growing support. And every day, people are going to GallegoForArizona.com and pushing and pushing that button to donate. So that's where we're seeing our small dollars, small grassroots support 
in here in across the country and in Arizona, and that's going to be the winning ticket in the end. And Senator Cinema hasn't announced whether she will run uh, for re-election as an independent. But is there a concern that a three-way race, if she runs between yourself, her, and a Republican, could divide that Democratic vote and essentially feed into the hands of whoever the Republican nominee is? There's no concern on our on our behalf because we understand polling, and more importantly, we understand Arizonans. She is very unpopular with Democrats and independents. Uh, you know, her running is more likely to pull from the Republicans because she, you know, basically has abandoned a lot of the values that people care about in Arizona. So we know that if we run a strong race, that's the best chance for us to actually hold this seat because Senator Cinema is never going to be senator again. She's going to end up in third place. And it's going to be a very low, low third place uh, in, in the in the teens, even, you know, even lower than that. And the only way for Democrats to hold this is we run a strong Democrat that really aligns with Arizona values, that has trust with the voters. Uh, and it's not cinema that has it. It's someone like me and it's someone that I, something I'm going to earn over the next two years. And have you spoken with her since announcing your run? No, but no one really speaks to Senator Cinema, and that's kind of the problem. And, you know, politicians, you know, that's not necessarily a big deal that we don't talk to each other. The fact is she hasn't spoken to anybody in Arizona. She hasn't had a town hall in three years. People that have, you know, have been working with her and helping her out for um, more than a decade can't even get a hold of her anymore. And more importantly, she doesn't hold herself accountable. She'll be in D.C. striking deals for the pharmaceutical companies and then come never come back to Arizona and explain why she was a lobbyist for the pharmaceutical companies instead of for her seniors. Uh, she does things of that nature all the time and feels that she has no reason to answer to Arizonans. Well, the you know your job review is up, uh, and now it's time to to see what the your employer thinks. And the voters of Arizona are so far showing very that they're very unhappy with her employment so far. Speaking of town halls, how are you going to balance your job as a congressman with the Senate race? Well, it's going to be tough. Look, uh, you know, and also being a father and soon to be father of, a, of another uh, a girl, uh, a boy and a girl now. Um, very excited about that. Uh, but look, it may be tough, but it's not tougher than what a lot of Americans are going through every day. I have a lot of help. I have a lot of assistance out there. I'm going to hire people to make sure we, we keep all the wheels uh, turning. Uh, but, you know, we have to for, we have to remember the reason we do this is because there are mothers right now that are trying to figure out how to pick up their kid from school, go back to work, also go probably for themselves to go after after school to some kind of, you know, degree program, uh, while also who's going to take care of the kids. Uh, there are dads right now trying to figure out how to balance two jobs just to make sure they can make the mortgage and still be a good dad. So, you know, don't worry about me. Uh, let's worry about the Americans every day that are trying to do some real life balancing and some real world hard decisions. Right, right. And finally, you announced that you received one million dollars from 27,000 donations within, what, 24 hours of announcing your campaign. I think it was eight how hours. Do you, eight, OK, eight hours. OK, so how do you expect to um, keep that momentum going? You know, we have to just run uh, the campaign and we have to communicate what we're going to be doing uh, on this campaign, I think that will encourage more people to donate. And we have to, unfortunately, get on the phones and call people. And that's what I'm going to have to do also. It's part of the campaign. Uh, but I think as more people see the type of campaign we're going to run, I think they're going to be more inspired uh, to give. You know, I'll give you a good example. Uh, I'm from Maricopa County, uh, Phoenix, uh, South Phoenix, a very proud uh, South Phoenician. But I'm starting this election in Tucson because, you know, most of the time everyone starts in some very ritzy part of, of Phoenix, a nice little uh, hotel. We're starting this in a plaza in Tucson and we're ending this uh, on sovereign land uh, in White River, uh, Arizona, and also going to the Navajo Nation because we believe every part of Arizona needs to be represented and should be talked to. Uh, and guess what? We're going to be going to the red areas, too, because they've been neglected for far too long by politicians. So uh, when people see that, when people see that we're willing to, to do that outreach, I think they're gonna be inspired to be part of this campaign. All right, well, Congressman, thank you so much for being with us today on What America's Thinking. Thank you, guys. Thank you. And we'll have more What America's Thinking next.